welcome to this lecture. Today, we are going to deal with these topics little quickly but in detailed approach. My name is Gunjan Subedi and as always, I will be guiding you in this topic with practical explanation and examples when necessary. Before starting, let me kindly remind you to subscribe to My Lean University, which is my initiative to deliver free and quality professional education to your screen. In this lecture, we are going to study about the process capability. Process capability consists of two words, right? They are process and capability. So what is a process? Process is a sequence of activities that convert the less valuable resources or inputs to more valuable resources or products or outputs. Capability is the ability to produce those goods within certain desired specification. So process capability is the measure of the ability of a process to meet or exceed the specification on a consistent basis. Another term, we have statistical process control or SPC. So what is SPC? To meet the highest level of process capability, we need to use statistical measures to monitor, analyze, control and improve the process. Statistical process control is the use of statistical techniques to control any process. With proper control of every process, we can help reduce the number of defects, identify the variations in the process and also thus improve the process. We use the tools such as control chart and process capability as tools of the statistical process control. The control chart helps to visualize the flow of process to locate any defects or special causes of variation. See this example. Here a machine is producing some goods at an hourly production rate of 1000 parts per hour. Suppose the defect rates is 20 to 60 defects per 1000 parts is normal. So we have 20 and 60 as a lower and upper control limits. You can see that inside these lines of upper and lower control limit, there are some variations which are due to common causes variation. Things like slight incorrect measurement reading, change in speed, a slight increase in temperature might be responsible for the defects and these are the common causes of variation or defects. See these points, these are out of specifications and are not usual. These are due to unexpected reasons for which we should investigate properly. These are called special causes of variation. Control charts and process capability helps to locate and see the regions and magnitudes of these special causes of variation. We will study the variation with the help of control chart in the related lecture. For now, let's dive into process capability again. So coming to this point, you have understood that the process capability is one of the tools of statistical process control along with control chart. We define process capability as process capability is the measure of ability of a process to meet or exceed the specification on a consistent basis. Let us see some terms used in process capability. So for this, let us learn about the process capability in this is CP, which is also known as process potential. CP equals tolerance width divided by process capability. For a process in statistical control, process capability is six sigma. The tolerance width is the difference between upper and lower control limit. Hence, CP is upper control limit minus lower control limit divided by 6 or 6 sigma. There are three possible range of values for CP. If CP is equal to 1, the process variability just meets the specification. The process is minimally capable. If the CP is less than 1, the process variability is outside the range of specification. The process is not capable of producing within specification. If CP is greater or equal to 1, the process variability is tighter than specification and exceed minimal capability. A CP value of 1 means 99.74% of the product produced falls within the specification limit. There is another term called capability ratio or CR. 
the capability ratio is the inverse of cp or 1 by cp so if we inverse this formula of cp we get capability ratio or cr equals 6 times sigma divided by upper control limit minus lower control limit if the capability ratio is lesser than 0 0.75 we say that the process is capable of generating goods or producing the outputs as per the specification if the capability ratio is between 0 0.75 to 1 we say that the process is capable with tight control and if the capability ratio or CR is greater than 1 we say that the process is not capable note that CP is an abbreviation generally it is uh, referred as the upper and uh, lower part denoted as CPU and CPL respectively their equations are CPL is the difference of process mean and lower specification limit divided by three times standard deviation and CPU is upper specification limit minus process mean divided by three times standard deviation CPK is the smallest value of CPL or CPU denoted as CPK is the minimum of CPL or CPU note that the term CPK that we are mentioning here is called process capability index and process capability index is preferred more than CP so why is CPK preferred more than CP there are two reasons calculations of CP assumes that process variability is centered on the specification range unfortunately it is not always the case and CP does not always indicate how well the process is performing it rather suggests how good the process could be let's then study about the term CPK which we call better than CP at explaining the process CPK is called process capability index and is used to determine how a process is running relative to the specification limit larger the value of CPK less likely that any items will be outside the specification limit so always larger CPK is better but what if CPK is negative it means the process will produce the outputs that will be outside the customers specification limits so what is a good CPK or what is the good process capability index we want a CPK or process capability index of at least 1.33 or 4 sigma value to satisfy most customers need a CPK of 1.33 indicates 4 sigma capability CPK of 2 indicates 6 sigma capability the greater the CPK the less likely non conformance will be present the CPK estimates if a process is capable of producing considering that the process mean may not be centered between the specification limit I want to make this uh, easy for you let us understand CPK with an example suppose you want to calculate your chances of driving the car well inside the garage and suppose you have just learned driving if your CPK is a negative number your process will regularly crash the car into the wall if CPK is 0 0.5 you have a good chance of hitting the wall on the entry if CPK is equal to 1 your car may be just touching the nearest ease of the entry if CPK is too great you have a great clearance you could double the width of your car before you hit the side of the garage if CPK is 3 excellent you have excellent clearance you could triple the width of your car before you hit the side of the garage this is just an example to let you understand that higher the value of CPK more stable will be the process we will learn the other quality and process control tools with similar examples in the future you will understand whatever we studied here when we solve the problems practically so there is nothing to worry if you are a little bit confused the concepts of cp and cpk are very important from the operations management or cqe or certified quality engineer or production planning and control aspects 
Before ending this lecture, let me remind you to join my Lean University's premium membership and enjoy a total free access for a limited time inside my Lean University's online library and get tons of free courses, free books and lecture topics on project management, Lean and Six Sigma, operations and supply chain, productive and preventive maintenance, quality maintenance, data science, industry and sales management, agile and scrum, kaizen or continuous improvement and much more totally free. No strings attached. As we have limited seats, only the early subscribers will be given open access inside the premium membership. And remember, it's totally free. Please subscribe and share the video if you share the common belief that professional education should be accessible to all.